the howl of the wolf Fills a lonely canyon High above the desert land They call Chicote The flame strikes a steel A cloud conceals the final stand And the noble fall Stay safe, stay warm, and you stay free with Chicote Outdoor Recreation. Hey, Bill here with Chicote Outdoor Recreation. So I uh, I got pretty lucky recently. I uh, I scored a rifle. Do you remember the 1970s? you remember all those ads from Thompson Center? The Hawken, the Cougar? Remember how badly you wanted one of those, but it was just always out of your grip, you know, because they, they were very expensive in the 70s. Well, 200 bucks doesn't sound like a lot of money today, but back in the 70s, it was uh, considered quite a bit of change. Long story short, I've always wanted one. I got a chance to get one. Uh, there's a guy online selling one. His name's Mark, great guy. Uh, met his wife, and uh, he sold me the rifle, and I think he kind of felt bad for me. He sold it to me for 100 bucks. And it was a little beat up, you know, it's missing a thimble, missing a rod, needed a lot of work. And that's what this video is all about, is the amount of effort I put into this. I rebrowned the barrel and uh, got, it, got it looking gorgeous again. And so now we have one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll some footage of some of those ads from the 70s, just kinda kindle your memories, get you going again. And I think you'll get a kick out of this. This is a complete restoration of a Thompson Center Hawken. And uh, well, hell, stick with me. I think, uh, I think if you're, if you're of that age group, you remember Jeremiah Johnson making his way into the mountains, forgetting all the troubles, and betting on forgetting all the something something. I think you'll dig this video, so stick with me. So there's the brass after its first uh, polishing. Uh, got all the brass off, getting it polished up. That's all the furniture that fits on the rifle. And uh, got it all off there. Got a lot of the uh, black off, got it kind of polished up. This is the first polishing, but it's starting to look pretty good. It's starting to take hold. Still getting rust out of there.
had us one rusty barrel. You can see the, uh, the amount of rust that's just taken over this barrel. Uh, wasn't really well cared for, but anyway, uh, gonna get it all out of there and get it straightened out. Just gonna take some time. So I wanna show you the barrel. Um, it's in pretty bad shape. Put a new nipple on there after I uh, clean the inside of the barrel, but here's the exterior of it. And you can see that somebody tried to brown or black it. I think they blacked it first and then browned it, but they, <laughs> it just didn't take. It's uh, it's kind of a mess, a lot of bald spots on here. Uh, the, the exterior of this barrel is in pretty, pretty rugged shape. Um, the underside, there's one spot here that looks like the browning did actually take, but for the most part, um, this barrel is in, in pretty, pretty rugged shape. But I wanted you to get a look at the before of it, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this barrel down to the metal, and then I'm going to brown it. And I'm going to show you the only authorized browning solution authorized by Chicote Outdoor Recreation. If you're going to brown your barrel, this is the way to do it. You can see what happens here when, when you fail at browning. It, uh, it can really cause some problems. Another interesting thing about this, and I, I hope I can get this on camera, is if you look right here, you'll notice that it says, uh, it says Thompson Center. You know, stops the center arms, Rochester, uh, you know, New uh, New Hampshire, caliber 50. But it doesn't say Hawken. Why is that? Well, uh, initially they didn't. That's how I know this is from 1970. And uh, another thing with the serial number. If you go over here to the serial number, I can't really get that in there, but it starts with a K. And if your barrel starts with a K, then you know it's part of a kit, K for kit. So this was a kit that somebody put together and uh, they, they had a lot of trouble with their bluing or browning process. So we're going to get it back though. We're going to make it happen. Okay, here's that same barrel again after sanding it down quite a bit. And this is all done by hand. No machine tools here because, uh, well, I don't own a Dremel. But this is all done by hand. Here's the sandpaper I use. You can see it's 120 grit. And that's what 120 grit was able to uh, to get me. I got it down almost to the bare minimum. Uh, I'm going to do a little more sanding, a little more polishing, but that's taking it down to the bare metal. You have to be very careful when you get it to this stage because if you touch it with your fingers anywhere, well, it's a do-over uh, just because of the oils on your fingers. But uh, I'm going to get it down to the bare metal. My plan is to brown this. And when I do, I think you're going to be pretty shocked at how gorgeous this is going to come out. So 120 grit on the barrel, that's it naked. Uh, stick with me, let's see what happens. Okay, so real quick, what you're looking at here is my artificial humidity tent. What I'll do is I'll seal this up with some buckets of hot boiling water and that steam and the heat from the sun. I live in the desert, so it's very dry. And to do this process, you have to create artificial humidity or the browning solution is not going to work. You can see in the back there, I have some uh, lacquer thinner and that lacquer thinner is what you wash the barrel down with to get all of the residual oils off the barrel. I mean, even though you sanded it and did all this stuff, there's still residual oil contained in the metal just from cleaning the gun, stuff like that. So you wash it down with a lacquer thinner to get a clean surface. And then you'll see I have steel wool there and that's for carding. After the first time that I rust it, I'll take it out, wipe it down with a hot boiling rag and then steel wool it, get it nice and smooth and then do the process over and over again. And it goes on and on like that four or five times. But that's my basic humidity tent. Uh, some of the secrets I use to, to do browning. This is, uh, this is gonna be something else. Okay, well, it's been three hours. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to find here. Uh, after three hours, you have to put on a second coat. You don't rub anything off at this point. You wait three hours to put on a second coat. So I'm going to open it up. Again, don't know what I'm going to find. This ought to be, uh, ought to be interesting.
Well, you can see it's starting to take on a little bit of brown characteristics. Um, I want to go ahead and apply the second coat. You can see I got my bucket set up in there. What I'm trying to do is create an artificial uh, humidity to aid in the, uh, the browning process. So here comes the second coat. We're going to see what happens. There it is. A thing of love and beauty. Completely browned up. Let's see if I can't zoom in on it any, uh, just so you can see the richness of that brown and how taking your time and being meticulous, this is what it'll get you. Hey, Bill here with Chicote Outdoor Recreation. So, this is it. Don't know if it's going to fire or not. I guess we're going to find out. But here's the restored Thompson Center, brown barrel, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun today. So stick with me. Uh, we're going to see how she does. Good feeling. All right. Three. Hey, until the next time I see you, you know, I never like to close a video without telling you to stay safe, stay warm, and stay free. But I want you to hear those words. You stay safe, you stay warm, you keep yourself free. You do those three things, you'll be in good shape.